very much for, uh, for the organization of this meeting. I think it's really important. And I completely agree that we need to have kind of an intimate forum to discuss our challenges together. I also want to say thank you to uh, the, oh, look what I found, uh, to the Council for Higher Education uh, for actually developing this challenge and, uh, uh, and creating this vibe uh, uh, going f uh, further, which I think is really, really important. I also want to say uh, 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 thank you to our team of the Jerusalem uh, Impact, JLM Impact, the Jerusalem Consortium, uh, which we worked together on, uh, on the competition last year. Uh, Yoav is here. Uh, of course, Ayelet is here. Uh, Mikhail is here. Is there anyone else from your team here with well, They left. They left. Okay. <laughs> they knew I was going to talk, so they left. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Anon Dekel. I'm the head of the uh, Innovation and Entrepreneurship Center at the Hebrew University. Ayelet here, Ayelet Cohen, is my uh, co-conspirator in crime and developing this uh, center. Um, and what we have chosen to talk about today is how to help our graduates survive the coming disruption. Uh, obviously, in five minutes, there's no way we can tell, talk about all we were planning to do and all our vision, so we decided to focus on this small little problem, basically. Um, so as we know, I'm sorry, as we know, uh, or as we may not, might not know, uh, about 120 years ago, in the year 1900, 97% of humanity was working in agriculture. Today, 3%, depending on where and, and who you ask. So it's obvious to us that over these last 20, 120 years, not all of these people have become uh, out of work. They've obviously had to change the work, and the world, the world of work has changed substantially over that 120 years. The thing is that that change took a number of generations, between one and two generations. So people had some time to understand that this uh, tidal wave was coming and then they could retrain themselves. Today, this change is not happening over a number of, uh, of human generations. It's happening over a number of human years. And therefore, this is really, really uh, a much bigger problem. Therefore, when we ask ourselves, what are our students going to need to know, to need to have an intimate relationship with, to have in their capabilities to stay as uh, uh, innovators within the organization they are going to work with. And as we know, only a small percentage of them are going to actually set up their own startups. And so what are they going to need to know and be able to do in order to stay relevant within the future uh, world of work? Then we see, we basically outlined these number uh, of, 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 of characteristics. All of you know this. I'm not going to talk about this. I'm obviously not saying anything new here. The issue is that when we look at this, we say, oh, this is interesting, because this is exactly what we're trying to do uh, with entrepreneurs. Uh, so uh, the question is, basically, how we do this. And therefore, we've put a system, and uh, this is going to be very reminiscent of what we heard uh, uh, earlier today. So we've, we've developed a system that is both a structure, uh, which anyone who participated in the competition last year is going to recognize from the definitions that we received from, from the Committee for Higher Education, and we also are, are going to be doing a funnel. So here you can look at it as an upside funnel where we're going from, the, from bottom up. We're starting with entrepreneurial culture, uh, and that is basically making it clear to every single student on campus that entrepreneurship and innovation is something that can be relevant for their lives. It can be relevant for their lives not only if you're in the low-hanging crew of engineering students, sciences students, etc., uh, but also if you're uh, in the liberal arts, if you're studying philosophy, etc. Uh, um, if you choose to uh, explore these directions, you're going to be much more capable and much more hireable in the future disruption that's coming. Obviously, throughout the entrepreneurial culture, a certain percentage of those students are going to say, you know what, this is interesting. I want to learn more about this. We'll then put them through a number of options of education. A certain percentage of those are going to say, okay, we've learned about this, but how do we do it? Uh, and then we'll put them through a process of practice. And then a certain percentage of those are going to say, okay, this is what I want to do now. This is the most important thing in my life, and I'm going to do this. And then we'll put them into a, pro a launch process uh, with the, the, uh, the existing acceleration processes that we all know about. Uh, to the right of that, we have reach. We need to get the word out. We need to uh, uh, interface with the internal uh, communities at the university, with the external community of Jerusalem, our partners, Street, etc. And on the left, it's kind of hard to see here, we have IP uh, management issues, which again, we uh, are working with our TTO, with Yisum, in order to drop the barriers of, of enabling these processes to happen as easy as possible. 
So when we look at the type of tools, you, someone's going to give me a few minute, uh, a one minute, okay. So when you look at the type of tools uh, available to us, obviously we have the courses, we have workshops, PBL is an issue which I'll talk about in a second, and of course online. Uh, Course-wise, we're looking for, to get massive participation in, in uh, Innovation and Entrepreneurship 101. Uh, we're going to be developing additional courses to what exists at the university today. Uh, we're hoping to get towards even a full degree at the end of the process. And of course, student-generated uh, uh, courses, which I don't have time to talk about now, but I think is, is, is an interesting process. Mm -hmm. Workshop-wise, we're going to be developing a venture creation studio starting, the first ones are starting this March. Uh, learning modules around those uh, uh, um, uh, studios, which we can then mix and match and make available in other areas. Of course, soft skills development workshops, projects and prototyping workshops. PBL is a major issue. Uh, we've decided that it's not something that we can solve. Uh, PBL is relevant in some courses, not relevant in others, but this is a, a process that has to be done in cooperation with the rector and the te teaching methods units. And of course, online. If we want to get to as many students as possible, and we're talking about reaching thousands of them uh, in four years' time, then the only way we're going to be able to do that economically and practically is by uh, online courses, and part of the funding that we've uh, taken on will be to develop uh, four online courses over the next four years, one course a year, learning from the process in, in an iterative fashion. Online modules for skills development as part of these. Uh, online mentoring and help platforms. And of course, getting the word out through blogs, for, uh, video logs, and, and podcasts. That's it. Thank you.